Hey everybody, it's Roger King. So today we're gonna dive into this house that I bought over two years ago. What I was thinking was an eight month fix and flip turned into a two and a half year new construction ground up and turned it in from a 2,600 square foot house to a 4,100 square foot house in Palm Springs, California. We're gonna talk about the good, the bad, the challenges, the things that I learned, the things that I wish I would have done, and some of the numbers involved so that everybody can use this information to build their own home or build a new home. And what are the things you need to look out for and set in order so that you don't lose any money. So in late 2020, I was approached to buy a particular house with a couple of investors and somebody I'd known for a long time and trusted said, we should buy this house and fix it up. It would cost $250,000. And I thought, yeah, that seems reasonable. We'll get it done. And then that person turned out to be a flake and I discarded that relationship. And then I found another person to partner with who was supposed to be a world-renowned designer. And it turns out that this guy just could not push the ball down the field. And it cost me time and it cost me money. And I had to push him out of the deal as well. And to my benefit, I had been able to really, you know, dive into the details and get the plans approved with the city of Palm Springs. And this literally took 15 months to get these plans approved. And imagine 15 months with no income, with a house that sits with half a roof, uh, no power, no electricity, uh, yeah. no water, no utilities, just on an empty shell of a house because we'd already done the demo. And the city of Palm Springs, in their challenging ways of doing the approval process, they would send out the plans to some firm down in San Diego and wait for them to do it, send it back, and then send it to us and say it's either approved or not approved. And they just drag their feet. So that was sort of the precursor to the construction phase. So fast forward from the time I bought it in March of 2021, all the way to June of 2022 is when we started construction. Then we started and the contractor said, look, I need 120 days to build this house. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna build in some extra time. So I built in another three months of my budget to get this house constructed and built, you know, get it on the market. But even that took longer. And he would continually tell me, look, I need another day. He would tell me continually, I need another week. He would tell me continually, I need another month. I need a couple more months. And you fast forward from February of 2023 all the way to November of 2023. Those were all the delays that he charged after the contract expired in November of 2022. So I'm 12 months over interest payments to the lender. I have been waiting for the property to get done before we could stage it and then put it on the market. And finally, as of last week, we got it on the market in Palm Springs, California. It's a luxury home. We took it from 2,600 square feet to 4,100 square feet. We redid the pool. Obviously everything ground up is brand new. We've got high-end appliances like Wolf and Sub-Zero. We've got, you know, water, tankless water heaters. We've got a three car garage. It even has a movie theater. But I'll tell you, there were hard lessons along the way. The first lesson really was the ability for my early partner, my second partner, to move the ball forward. And I had a lot of faith in his ability to design and to execute on the property, but he didn't design it in a reasonable amount of time. And he didn't design it to include some of the panoramic views of the desert mountain that are behind the house. And I don't understand why he didn't do that other than he just wasn't invested as much as I was. And as the days ticked on, I became more and more and more invested. So when I took it over, I really had to make sure that everything was on track and moving forward each and every day. What I would do differently is to be much more involved in the design and the architecture phase of the property prior to going to the city of Palm Springs. Because had we known some of the setback rules and you know we changed the garage from the front of the house to what we consider the side of the house, and the city of Palm Springs said, well, that's now the front of the house for some reason even though the front door location essentially hasn't changed. 
But now because we have the garage on this side, now we need to change the address because we sit on a corner lot, which makes no logical sense. I'm sure it wouldn't make sense to you. It doesn't make sense to me, but City of Palm Springs decided this is the way it is. So, okay, we deal with it. But that made a problem for the setbacks. So a setback is if you have a road in front and the front of the house becomes the side of the house, you have to shorten that distance that you're allowed to build out towards the road. Doesn't make sense. The same with the side of the house. There was already the side of the house, now became the back of the house. And you have to create all different setback rules for that. So we had to redesign all of these things several times in order to meet the new setbacks. And somebody might suggest, well, why didn't you just move the garage back to the front? Yeah, I mean, when you're 12 and 13 months into the design process and they've signed off on a whole list of things, how do you go back in and redesign the house so that the garage is in front, so now all the setbacks are different. At that point, you can't. You have to just keep moving it forward the best you can in order to make sure that you can stay somewhat on schedule. Even though we were five months at that point over schedule in the wow. permitting phase. The contractor I have mixed feelings about, to be honest, because he's done some good work, but he's also only building what's on the plans. And he's not saying, hey, we should make this adjustment. Call me up and say, Roger, we need to make this adjustment because I found out that there's no room for a bed in the master bedroom suite. And we have this long window on a, on a wall, but there's nowhere to place the bed. Why didn't he see that? Because he's in it, he's building it. He says, I just go with the plans. So by him not having some foresight and some design experience in his brain and seeing how all of this stuff is being laid out, while they're framing, then it cost me an extra $3,000 on that window. Because we had the window installed, I saw the, I saw the room, and sometimes you can't see this until you're well within the construction. And it cost me $3,000 to get a new window, to shrink it down to 18 inches so that we had a place in the master bedroom for a bed. Uh, there's a couple of different things like that that have cost me about another $20,000 on about a $1.3 million construction budget. And yeah, we went from a $250,000 rehab to a $1.3 million new construction. And I had budgeted and I have investors and I can you know, make that happen. Uh, and you know, hopefully, eventually, we'll get this property sold over the next few months and we'll get all of that back and we'll be somewhat profitable, I think, if the market conditions hold, which I think will still, you know, the market conditions will hold and I think that we'll still be profitable. I'll let you know in another video. But I think that there are things that people can do today when they're pre-planning for new projects, you know, really go in and make sure that your designs are set before you even submit to the city. Because cities right now, I'm hearing nationwide, nobody is turning things around quickly. There's a glut of new houses being built and there will be for the foreseeable future. There's all these uh, statistics that suggest that we have a six million house deficit in our country right now and the people are going to need to buy these homes so all of the cities are going to need to revamp their processes that's going to cost you time building it's going to cost the contractors time it's just going to be an ever expansive process so budget way more than just half of the extra time that i budgeted on i would suggest budgeting double the time I'd rather be conservative in my approach and budget than being caught short and not have enough capital or enough time to get everything done because of unforeseen delays. But I love the house, to be honest. I think it looks amazing. I'm gonna put a link below in, our, in the channel here, uh, and it's a Palm Springs yeah. residence. So if you're in the market, go ahead and check it out. If you just wanna see one of the projects that I built, check that out too. Anyway, that's kind of a long and short of what was good and the bad and the ugly. And I hope that this has been helpful. If you wanna leave a comment, I would love to know, what would you do on this property to build it in time, under budget, and get done with it? Tell me in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching.